Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome back to another Ship Spotlight. Now, this one is hot off the workshop. This is the Octavia Cruiser number three. This has been lovingly crafted by Pavel. I had the pleasure of working with Pavel in the Colony War series, and his ships don't disappoint. They are very functional, have a lot of firepower, and they can take one hell of a hammering. So you can seriously build some cool ships, as well as aesthetically a very pleasing to look at. So let's have a look at the exterior of this ship and have a look at its capabilities. So coming around the front, you have in classic Pavel style, a wall of missile launchers. So you've got eight up at the top behind the protected blast doors and eight down at the bottom in this little protected area that offers a nice bit of protection not a super amount but some fire from top and above from them gatling gun turrets is going to keep them missile launchers in action a little longer and knowing pavel he's, he's always got plenty of backup systems and armor in here to protect so moving around the side you can also see they've got some little navigation lights a little bit of detailing there it's always nice to see with the antennas around the center and we come to the side of the craft so you'll notice just how many missile launchers are in there and how they are staggered as well. So if we fly in front of this ship, just look at the outlines of the silhouette of the missile launchers. This ship is going to overwhelm another ship of similar size with a firepower. And that's exactly what you want. So working our way down the side, you can see the weapon pods have been tucked in. And sneakily here, we actually have a welder. So this means that even if these turrets are disabled, and that's usually what causes a lot of the end at the ends of the fights in Space Engineers, turrets get disabled and it becomes a ramming match, they can weld them up as long as they have parts in stock. So that's very cool. And you can see that happens to all of the turrets down here. Also, a little bit of a docking port down in this lower section down there as well. So you can connect up supplies if you need. Another nice collection of weapons here, all with welders, and you can see it wraps around this body. And I love this combination of blue, dark grey and grey. It's just really nice. It's nice appealing to the eye and also blends into space from a distance quite nicely as well. Something important that a lot of players don't can take consideration when battling in space is camouflage. How soon will they see your ship approaching? So this is a really cool area here. You can see how the blocks have been staggered to build up to the engine bay cells. Nicely detailed, and you can see there's some interior turrets here. Always useful when you've got blind spots like this where a man with a jetpack could try and break into your craft. That is something you definitely don't want. So working our way along the engine cells, a little bit of venting through here, just, just a detail piece, and we come around to the back. So the important thing to know is here with these hydrogen thrusters, you can see this blue tint that's been added via spotlights behind it, and then also this central sort of curved area with plenty of interior turrets tucked in here to stop people getting into your engine bay cells. There's, there's nothing more frustrating than that. And if we actually have a look behind the scenes here, you can see we have them spotlights creating that effect, and it is all plumbed up, ready to go. This is totally vanilla, and it, um, if it's to Pavel's specs, as I suspect, that you could probably cut this thing in half and it would still be flying. So that's the exterior of this ship pretty much taken into consideration. You can't really see which side is which. If you spin the ship around, you won't really be able to see what's a top and a bottom, to be fair, since it's all symmetrical on both sides, or, or pretty much symmetrical. So coming in through the airlock, we enter into this little area with the airlock chamber that is changeable. And you'll notice that the direction of this ship is actually opposite to what you'd expect. So if we just head out there and I'll, I'll show you this so airlock is like so with a little bit of a, a weapon in and that should light up and vent that area out so you can see it is vertically stacked in this particular area interesting interesting to see so airlock closing up behind us and we are coming back inside airlocks are critical you can obviously go around them by using the glass block sort of glitch you've got a full armory Weapons and equipment on this side. Always great to have an aerial airlock. More supplies on this side. And then we start to drop down the floors. So you can see in this area, car containers and whatnot. But you can see the vertical shaft that leads up and down by glass. So we're actually going to go up first. Each of these decks. This is this is a really cool layout. It's a total alternative to what you see in a lot of ships. You've got like a crew quarters. You've got this very blue lighting. I'm sure if you were stuck on the ship for a long time, this blue lighting might go to your head a little bit but it's very, it's very nice while you're here i think i'd have to have a dim lights option or else the blueness feels like i'm playing it you know like battlefield 3 or battlefield 4 
uh, uh, you know, that sort of blue. Oh, it was kind of gone in four, but three. There's the cockpit itself. And here we also have programmable lighting. Let's run that. Oh, so we've got different modes. Oh, look, he's, he's, he's paid it. He's already planned it, even though I was thinking about it. And what have we got here? We have the blue lighting. I'm guessing we have combat lighting. Perfect. And we have purple lighting for when you want to disco. Lovely. Let's let's leave it um, at normal lighting for the moment, like so. You see, we've got access to another airlock through there. I think that's like a, a, this is a side tilting airlock. Oh, this is access to the interior so we can fix things up. You, you need this sort of maintenance hatch. Nice work there, Pavel, putting that in. So you can get actually into the interior behind the walls. A lot of players do miss that out, and you end up having to drill holes through in battles to access vital systems. So going down this staircase, coming down the middle here, you can see that we've got a little med bay in that section. We're dropping further down. We've got the programming. We've got WIPS door script running on that particular computer and a few spare computers as well as a backup cockpit. Always super important to have. And this, of course, comes with them settings as well. Having backup cockpits and CICs in different rooms protected is, is just a really good idea. And it'll keep your ship alive for a lot longer. And then we've got access down here to the rear airlock. So this is hopefully giving you some ideas as well as how you could farm your own vertical ship. And and a lot of vertical ships I do see are not particularly well planned out. They, they seem to be very stiff, but this one takes you right through the ship and even a little backup seat there that you could then remote control this craft from. So every eventuality has been, has been planned out really. And then you've got access down here into the gyroscope room, do some gyroscope repairs. And then the reactor room and the guts of this thing with the hydrogen tanks down here. So this is actually using an internal hydrogen thruster system. And I like to know what you guys think about this. Do you like an internally tucked hydrogen system like this? You see how precise it is so things don't burn each other. Or do you prefer your thrusters out on the outside? So yeah, that's plenty of tanks. That This thing's going to be going for a very, very long time. So let's uh, get back into our spectator camera. I'm actually going to take this up through the ship, so just watch through the clipping. And we will go up to the top deck. We can have a look there, and we'll pop ourselves in. We can have a little bit of a fly about. So I'm expecting great performance from Pavel ships. They usually aim really well. They're currently off. So let's turn them on. And take this thing for a little bit of a test drive. So our acceleration is quite steady. Let's have a look at the acceleration. Very nice. That is a very nice stopping speed. That's what you need. Gyroscopes performing pretty well. You could track a target and engage if need be with it. Let's have a look at our roll. So it's got quite a nice roll. Nice thrust in it. This is this is just a pretty nice all-round ship. Ready to go straight from the workshop. If you wanted to take something into a smaller battle on a server, this would be something you'd want to go with. It's got enough firepower, enough weapons, and it's pretty all around balanced if you had a, a fleet of these, or maybe have a look at some of Pabble's other workshop items and battle them up against each other. There's all sorts of different shapes and designs. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Have a little bit of a look in the comment section and tell me what you think of this ship, and especially what you think of internally hidden thrusters. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.